Wireless Land Weekly, episode 32, NetScan Tools. Welcome to Wireless Land Weekly, a podcast focused on the wireless networking professional. We aim to educate, inform, entertain, and inspire. Get ready to listen and enjoy. Now to our host of the show, Keith Parsons. Well, welcome back to uh, Wireless Land Weekly. In this week's episode, we have Kirk Thomas of NetScan Tools, and he'll be talking about his software and how it can help you as a wireless land professional do better in your job to analyze your network. Uh, though originally started as a wired tool, NetScan Tools can run just as well on a wireless network and give you some information about the upper layer detail. A lot of you use things like Air Magnet or OmniPeak or Wireshark to look uh, down at the Mac layer, but NetScan Tools can give you some views up a layer and see what's going on above the Mac layer. And as a Wi-Fi professional, it's a, still a good skill to know. Now on with the show. Interesting facts, little known tidbits, things you might not have known, short little bits to set your mind a reeling. Perhaps you're doing a voice over a Wi-Fi survey and you think, I haven't even installed the APs up yet. How can I attach anything to a call manager, stringing wires up to our AP on a stick? How am I going to pull that off? Well, one way you can do a voice over Wi-Fi survey and have a voice call going simultaneously, I just take two iPod touches that work on 802.11. I set up a MiFi that's a hotspot using 3G. You don't even have, need to have backhaul. And I have over a SIP client, each iPhone touch, iPod touch talks to the other iPod touch. And there you go. You have a voice over IP conversation going as you're walking around very inexpensively, only a couple hundred dollars. You don't need a call manager. You just need a couple of SIP accounts. Things every wireless LAN professional needs to know. Gear up, buckle down, and stand by for the real techie stuff. Hello again, this is Keith Parsons with Wireless LAN Weekly. And in today's episode, we have with us Kirk Thomas. He's the developer of NetScan Tools and NetScan Tools Pro software. Uh, I've worked with Kirk in his software for years. I used to work with Laura Chapel, and we uh, toured the country training people. And one of our classes was White Hat Hacking. And in that class, uh, you would receive a copy of NetScan Tools Pro, and we use that uh, to teach certain concepts of working on a network. Uh, Kirk's done an amazing job with the software. It's been around a while, and I, I think some of our audience don't use it, but should. And so I'd like to invite Kirk to share the next couple of minutes with us and talk about his product and his company and, and how we can use this tool to learn about our own networks. So Kirk, glad that you could join us today. Well, I'm glad to be here, and I, I hope that I can answer some of your questions and help you understand how NetScan tools could help you with your situations. Well, most of our audience use uh, wireless networks, and in wireless networks, uh, they're still, that's just the link layer. They're writing on the whole rest of the network, and so your tools can be used to, to help them in what they do. So if you could just kind of give us a little history of where the tool comes from and what, what the audience is using today. Sure. Um, back in 1995, we, uh, as you'll remember, we, the World Wide Web was just getting started, as they called it. And we had uh, some simple network function tools that were out there. Um, you know, of course, you had command line ping in, in your uh, command line of Windows 95 or even Windows NT 3.5, if anyone remembers those. Um, but what I saw was the need to integrate several different tools into one because you you could get one tool that did ping and one tool that it did ftp and another tool that did trace etc so what i saw was the need to put them all together and so i selected what was called a, a tabbed interface at the time and i put uh, actually just three different functions on uh, one simple tool and the functions were to translate a host name to an IP address. Okay, that's something we don't really care too much about anymore. But we also had finger, and if, if you remember that, that was something that went on a long time ago. And then socket info, and it worked in Windows. Now, this was a 16-bit application, and so it evolved from there. We went to a 32-bit application shortly after that. Uh, we've followed each version of Windows, and we've added tool after tool to it. We got rid of the tabbed interface at some point, and we went 
to NetScan Tools Pro in late 1999. And now we're in the 10th iteration of NetScan Tools Pro, the 10th major iteration, and we're almost released, we're almost at the point of releasing version 11. And the the thing about NetScan Tools Pro is you have, instead of just three simple tools, you have, I think the last count was 48 tools, somewhere along those lines. And they range from everything from something simple like that DNS tool, and we still bring Finger along just because somebody might want it, um, to some very advanced things that deal with various types of ARP and packet generation, packet viewer, and of course we're Wireshark compatible with our packet viewer. And we've got various different kinds of scanners and uh, much more advanced trace route than we had back in those days. Well, what, and how, course, how are people using it today? Well, uh, a lot of our customers are network administrators. They're using it to troubleshoot their DNS problems. Um, some are trying to find uh, devices that are on their networks that shouldn't be there or that should be there. Um, they're trying to to gather statistics. They're trying to test firewalls. They're doing many different things. And uh, some of them are, are doing simple things like testing their email servers. Uh, some of them are investigators. A lot of law enforcement uses it. In fact, we have a law enforcement specific edition which helps, which is tailored towards their needs in terms of the specific tools they need. They don't need some of the, the uh, network management tools. So we, we have a lot of different tools for a lot of different people. And so we cover a fairly wide variety. It's a, it's a wide toolkit is what it is. Well, because you have lots of lots and nearly, nearly 50 different tools, uh, one of the things I found when we were teaching the tool was you have uh, some really good documentation on what each of those tools do. And some of, some of the times I would tell the students that if you just read what Kirk wrote about this, you'll understand that technology. So one, kudos to you for that. But because there's so many uh, different tools, what did you do to kind of give an expert system to it? Oh, yes. Um, in both NetScan Tools Pro and NetScan Tools LE, we have what's called the automated toolkit. Now, what that does is that actually uses some of your tools for you in some of the most commonly expected um, scenarios. So let's say you have a particular host name or domain name or something like that. You can put that in and then check a number of boxes and it will go out and actually operate the tool for you. And in the case of NetScan Tools LE and in the case of NetScan Tools version 11, which isn't, isn't released yet, it will actually save all that information to a, a database and then present that in a report at a later time that you can view in your web browser. So essentially, you don't have to, to know how to operate every tool in its detail. Although those who want to have the control over every little option do have that control. It's very nice to be able to just quickly put in uh, an IP address uh, and get the information you need. So how would a law enforcement, obviously we, we want to be on the good side of the law, not the bad guys. How would a law enforcement officer use this tool to help uh, track down a perp? Well, what they're going to do is they're going to take, they often have an IP address. And so they want to know such things as where is it located? Or in the case of certain things, does the trace route between a couple of points, specifically their point, go outside the country or through another country to get to a certain server? And, and where is that server located? And, you know, your who is information, of course, will give you the basics as far as who owns the IP address. But we, we take it further and we get um, much more information with our who is. We actually try to find out the authoritative servers. We find the, the uh, host and domain name for that IP address and then various things like abuse contacts and everything. And then we also... Um, try to geolocate it if possible using certain databases. And it just gives them some, some ideas as to who to talk to. You know, just because that it says that it's private in the who is, that it's not private to them. They can always go out and get the real information, but they at least have the contact information at that point. Good. Uh, another question for you on the documentation. If someone's kind of new in 
in in using some of these tools. Some of your tools are kind of unique. And so how did you document uh, like the various ways you can ping? Maybe tell us how you how you kind of uh, kind of skirt the issues a little bit and and get ping from non ICMP. Well, yeah, ping is a very interesting little utility there. Of course, everybody thinks of ping as being ICMP, and that's your typical echo request and response packets. And so, what we did is we looked at the various other ways you can ping. You can ping with UDP, which is historically how uh, Unix and Linux did their pinging. They ping to an upper port and then look for an ICMP response. Well, we even took it a little further and added a new TCP ping mode, which actually does quite similar things to the UDP, except that it goes out all the way to the target. Now, advantage of that is um, you, have, you might have a firewall on the other end. Well, it can go through that if you go through the correct port, like let's say port 80. And so it also, another thing with the TCP uh, ping is it shows you the, the latency if you're actually connecting to a web server or something like that, which is really handy. And it was, uh, this particular tool was brought as a suggestion from one of our uh, users. So we do listen to everything our users say. And, you know, if someone has a good suggestion, we always put it in our list and evaluate it and see if it's possible to do it. And yes, the... ICMP ping is what everybody thinks of, but oftentimes a device will not respond to ICMP, ICMP, and yet it will respond to TCP or in certain cases UDP. What about uh, ARPing? You also have some other ARPing tools that uh, most of us just do the very simplest ARP to find out, uh, you know, somebody's MAC address. What other kind of things can you do with your ARP tools? Well, the ARP tools are very interesting. Uh, you mentioned ARP ping, and uh, before I talk about that, why don't I talk about what you can do with the other ARP tools. Um, in version 11, we actually split it out to have ARP scanning, or in some terminology, MAC scanning. And as you know, ARP is not routed beyond your local LAN, so to speak. So what we do is we have a, a, a utility which sends it out to every IP address on your local LAN and it gives you a, a nice view of exactly what's out there. And remember, just because you're running a personal firewall and you're hidden from regular ping, ICMP ping or even TCP or UDP ping, it doesn't mean you can hide from ARP because if you can't ARP, you can't talk. So you're visible. And that's, now remember, that's on your local subnet. So if you're looking at a corporate situation where you've got a a subnet and you've got a room with lots of different computers, you can see what's there in a real hurry. The advantage there is we show the MAC address, like you mentioned, with the IP address. We also show the interface manufacturer so you can get a good idea of what device is sitting there, whether it's a, a printer or a, a router or whatever. And then we show its host name as well. And now back to ARP ping. Um, this takes it one step further. ARP ping is, is a little bit unique in that it's targeted towards one IP address. So what we do is we actually ping the IP address using ARP packets and it returns the MAC address and that sort of stuff. And we can do either a broadcast or a unicast ping and that'll also get your response time. So we show that. It's really handy in terms of discovering uh, exactly what is there and when or the, the speed that it will respond to an ARP packet. And what about DHCP? You have some other additional DHCP tools that uh, go beyond just what normal tools are. How, how might one of our users use those tools as well? Oh, yes. This is something I should have mentioned when you asked how our users are using it. This is DHCP, of course, is another thing that's limited to your local network segment. But it's oftentimes something that a lot of our users are very interested in, in uh, seeing because sometimes people bring in a uh, wireless access point that happens to have a DHCP server in it and it might be running. And so what you can do with the DHCP discovery tool is you can actually go out there and discover all the DHCP servers that are sitting on your local network segment, what IPs they're offering, subnet mask, lease times and all that sort of neat stuff. And uh, so Normally, your network is going to show just the one, but oftentimes you'll find a, sec a second one. 
especially if, you, if you're having DHCP problems, if people are complaining about getting an IP address or getting IP address conflicts. The other thing that's really handy, and this, this helped me recently, was our um, ISP changed their DNS completely. And I had forgotten that we, had, we were handing out the uh, various DNS IPs through our secondary DHCP server that we use here for tests on our network. And so I was able to see that because one of the things that we show as part of our discovery process is the DNS IPs that are returned by the DHCP server. And we also show the router IPs and other things like that too. Well, I was uh, just reviewing some of the, the other tools. We could talk for a long time if we went into each of the tools. But as a, as a group, they help network uh, administrators learn and troubleshoot. But they kind of have a little hackish kind of feel to them. Do you ever get tripped up uh, by looking like a hacking tool to virus scanners? Um, not lately, but we are aware of that. You know, the, you, we've got a port scanner. We've got a promiscuous mode scanner. Uh, we've got a, a ping sweep type scanner. And yes, those things could appear that way to some people. Uh, we don't try to uh, position ourselves as being a hacking tool. And in the past, the early versions of NetScan tools were favored a lot by hackers. In fact, you'll still find the old versions of NetScan tools sitting out there on the, on the internet. And uh, trying to trying to downplay any of that sort of stuff, but we, we do have a scanners. They well, are still there. You also have uh, like uh, OS fingerprinting as well. Yes, it's a, it's a maybe not as advanced as some of the OS fingerprintings you're going to find in, in Nmap or something like that, but it does depend on uh, using ICMP, which is kind of interesting. Um, there was a man who wrote a paper on that issue and I read the paper and, and, extended it to NetScan Tools Pro, and it works quite well, um, over, even over uh, fair distances. But it depends on sending um, ICMP packets that could be malformed. And if your ISP is blocking malformed packets, then it won't work that well. It really works best on a, a local network where you don't have anything blocking malformed packets in the way. And another question for you, you also have another piece of software called Switch Port Mapper. Let's see if I got the name right. Well, technically it's called the Manage Switch Port Mapper. And it's currently at version 1.99 and we're working hard on version 2. And what it does is it goes out and takes a switch, a network switch, uh, you know, any of your various major brands, and if you have the appropriate access credentials, it uses SNMP, so you're going to need to know a community name if it's using uh, version 1 or version 2C of SNMP. We're going to be extending that to uh, version 3 in the next release. But if you know that information, you can actually go out and map the switch. And what, what I mean by mapping it is finding out what uh, devices are attached to the actual physical port jacks. And so by uh, knowing the MAC addresses, then with appropriate other information you can gather from both the switch, your own computer, and other devices, you can find the IP addresses because it's, it's done on the, the MAC layer rather than the IP layer, unless you go to a core switch like a 6500 series. Well, those are uh, a, a nice addition, and that's a separate product. It's not part of NetScan Tools. Right. It's a separate product because we, we see people who get that alone and they're not uh, interested so much in NetScan tools. It, it just seemed to be that it was better to have them separated, although quite a few people do buy them both. We tend to uh, keep them separated as much as possible because they, they really fall in different uh, camps. But, you know, network administrators do use both. Well, one other uh, little bit, uh, as we're talking about your product line there, some people, in fact, when, when we were selling classes that we used NetScan tools as part of our curriculum, they said, well, why don't I just use the free tools that come on normal machines? Ping, Traceroute, they're all available. They're just in DOS, uh, you know, or I could download some free port scanner. Why would, uh, you know, how do you respond to those people who say, how, how does this professional tool compare to the free tools? I mean, you pay money, but what do you get for that extra money? 
Well, for one thing, uh, you get support. You don't get support with a lot of those free tools. And, you know, this is a very good question. I've looked at quite a few of these free Windows-based network tool apps. Um, a lot of them don't have ease of use. They're, sometimes they're not responsive. They lock up or they don't function as advertised. And there's even a few I've run across that say they're free. And they're, they're free for 30 days and then... 90% of the functions shut down <laughs> and you've got a bunch of functions that don't work and you still got a few. So yeah, free is, can be good. And you know, the, the best example is Wireshark. Hey, it's free. It's great. You know, but in a lot of cases, they don't provide the support that you need. If you, if you need to talk to somebody, you can call. If you need to email with somebody, I'll get your email. I'll reply to it. So there's, the, there's kind of the difference. And, you know, we do also integrate a lot of tools together into a package that work together. And, you know, when we have problems with the software, if there are problems, sometimes there are, believe it or not. We actually work to get those fixed and get them out to everybody. And you're, so constant, that's the and you're constantly improving. I mean, you've had, what, 10 full revisions in the last 10 years? Oh, yeah. It's uh, 10 full revisions um, since 1999, uh, countless minor revisions. In fact, we're working on a minor revision now for really soon for, for NetScan Tools Pro 10.98. That's the next minor release. And uh, so, yes, we have, we have countless releases. And a lot of that is to update databases, to catch up on some of the third-party things that are integrated into it. Um, it uses SQLite as a database engine, and they constantly update that. So we have to update it to uh, catch up with the changes they've made. It's a very nice database engine in case you're a developer. You also offer it in a USB form factor, uh, my personal favorite. So you can just take yours with you and work it anywhere. Uh, tell us why you came up with both form factors. Well, the USB version actually was your idea. It is a great idea. And um, the reason for it is a lot of these network technicians, as opposed to maybe an administrator, a network tech who goes around from machine to machine, he wants to be able to bring something to that machine and not have to install it because there may be rules about that or he may not have the permissions or... Whatever, the, the point is he can rapidly use the tools from that machine without actually having to install it. It's very handy. It's a very handy little tool. We've had uh, quite a few people interested in it, and I thank you for suggesting it. Well, it was really selfish in the beginning because that's just the way I wanted to run it. Uh, but I, I love the tools. Where can someone uh, find more information out about NetScan tools and I hear you've changed your web address as well. Well, actually, the web address hasn't really changed. It's still netscantools.com. But what we have done is changed the name of our company from Northwest Performance Software Incorporated, which is a mouthful, down to just plain netscantools.com. Much easier to remember that way. And uh, what's the, the retail price on this? The retail price for the installed version is 249 and for the USB version, it's 349. We will be um, releasing version 11, and if somebody buys now, they would of course get that upgrade for free as part of the uh, maintenance plan that's included with it. There's a one-year maintenance plan included with the software, either version. And do you have any other uh, versions other than the pro version? Well, as I mentioned earlier, we have NetScan Tools LE, which is the law enforcement tailored version. It has a subset of NetScan Tools Pro tools, and what is there has been changed so that it's it's simpler for those who are maybe not as network inclined to use. And it also records everything into a database. You have no choice; it has to record them now. With NetScan Tools Pro 11, it'll be there as available, but it will not be a mandatory thing. The difference there, of course, is the price is, is lower than NetScan Tools Pro. For those who are outside of law enforcement, it's 129 For those who are inside law enforcement, it's um, $69. Oh, that's a, a great deal, for, well, especially for people who are in law enforcement. 
Well, Kirk, I, I appreciate your time, and I uh, like hearing about your tools and highly recommend this to our, our audience who's listening. You also might want to go out and check out the videos that are available on his uh, website. There's a lot of training there that's uh, good for you to practice and get up to speed with. Anything, any final words, Kirk, about your product or how people can track you down via Twitter or your blog or some URLs? Yeah, well, uh, you mentioned Twitter. Um, we're at NetScan Tools, just like that. And that's spelled N-E-T-S-C-A-N-T-O-O-L-S. And then our blog is at netscantools.blogspot.com. And as far as using this on a wireless situation, a wireless LAN, it works fairly equally well as it would on a wireless, or I mean as a wired situation. It's just really the transport medium. Well, thank you for your time. And if people have any questions, then go out to netscantools.com. And uh, thanks for your time again, Kirk. And hopefully we'll hear back from you in the future when you uh, release a new product. Thank you for having me here, and I've enjoyed this time. Thanks. Well, thanks again to Kirk Thomas of Netscan Tools, who's given us a little insight into uh, the beginning of his product and how the product's working today. If you have any questions or ideas, you can uh, check him out on his uh, webpage. And if there's anything you'd like to add, see added to a future episode of Wireless Land Weekly, feel free to leave an email at feedback at wlandpros.com. We'll see you again next week. Wireless Land Weekly, a podcast focused on the needs of wireless land professionals. We look forward to your feedback. Please leave your comments at the bottom of the show notes or email feedback on the show can be sent to feedback at wirelesslandprofessionals.com. If you'd like to leave a voicemail feedback, just call 24-7 and leave a message at 1-801-481-9018. Until next time, this has been another production of wirelesslandprofessionals.com, a place to educate, inform, entertain, and inspire.